I will not waste too much time on um, who I or the European Property Federation are. Most of you understand it's the political lobbying instrument for the European real estate industry. And let's see if this works. Yes. Um, and so, uh, in a way, what I'm going to be talking about will be less impressive than what the previous uh, speaker said. But please do remember that Everything that I talk about today is about hard EU green building law, which applies not to 17 million rich Dutchmen, but to half a billion Europeans. That is the difference. Um, fine. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try, I've tried to pull together in 20 minutes the essence of uh, EU green building law. Uh, and before we get into that, uh, just a very few words. Uh, ob it, it's not obvious. It, it covers uh, not all EU policy, and it's going to be less and less that way, actually. Less and less will all EU policy cover the whole EU. Get used to it. I can't go into that. It's, in fact, a great thing. But for environmental policy, no, for energy efficiency, it does cover all 27 member states uh, plus all candidate uh, countries. It really is an expansive uh, type thing. And remember, the primacy of EU law over national law, even over national law that is more recent than uh, EU law. And finally, everything I talk about, these are de minimis rules. Uh, any member state is always free to do more, uh, as uh, is usually the case in uh, Holland. Uh, now, what's a little unorthodox is that I, of course, have many fine slides to show you, but in fact, I'm giving you what counts most right now. Really, focus on this one, this slide, because this is the essence of uh, everything, and it's where the big bucks really are. It means that, and the bang for the buck, because it means that uh, all over Europe, for half a billion people, Anyone who proceeds with a uh, major renovation has got to do an energy performance renovation. So that is a uh, very, very big deal. There are the conditions. Uh, they, uh, those conditions A and B are not difficult. Obviously, if you're just going to you know, paint your kitchen, it doesn't involve you. But uh, the minute you start doing anything serious with the office building or with the mixed building or with the house, you can very uh, easily uh, get to this. So this is uh, really a very major change, which is only kicking in now to a large extent, because although every time I refer to the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive, legal, we're talking about the directive of last year, it's a recast of the original directive of 2002. But this, until 2010, uh, only applied to buildings uh, bigger, uh, uh, with a bigger useful floor area than 1,000 square meters. Forget the entire housing stock. Now, with a few tiny exceptions we'll see later, it applies to absolutely every uh, building uh, in the land. Sorry. Um, now, uh, this is the requirement to do an energy performance renovation. Uh, but um, the directive says only, this is Europe, that, it has, that there has to be a requirement. It doesn't go into the detail of what that has to be. But nonetheless, uh, uh, do note that there is a common framework for calculating the energy performance of buildings. And in fact, experience shows it should have been probably, uh, probably uh, more detailed. That's a lot of people's fault, including ours. You can't get everything right. Uh, and there will be uh, sometime, probably not by 30 June, a comparative methodology framework for calculating cost optimal levels of minimum energy performance requirements. And uh, that kind of thing, with a few years' experience, will start pushing people all in uh, pretty much the same direction. Very quickly, you see very few exemptions from this uh, uh, directive. Very few things escape. Um, uh, uh, there you see them. I don't have to run through it for you. I will merely mention there's been some abuse with heritage buildings. It gets to the point, you know, there have been a certain number of Irish villages which have tried to pass off the whole town as heritage buildings and stuff like that. Uh, there's been a bit of trouble over uh, secondary residences. Uh, 
uh, the rapporteur in the European Parliament, uh, Mrs. Tikau, uh, tried to uh, get rid of that uh, secondary residence exemption, but uh, for instance, minority members with all of their uh, Finnish and Swedish, uh, 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 what do you call those, uh, little cottages and so on and so forth, uh, hey, that uh, would be serious business if you had to start going through this kind of thing. But I guess in Romania, the kind of people who have secondary residences, it must be more palatial. It must have been, I don't know, it must have been something like that. Anyway, it stays, it stays uh, for now. Uh, technical building systems, I don't want to bore you by reading that out, but that's important and that's also an important element in uh, bringing everybody uh, together doing more or less uh, the same thing. You've had time to see that? Uh, yes, and uh, uh, my colleague uh, did uh, mention this. Um, uh, nearly zero energy buildings. Uh, in fact, uh, the way I wrote this, if you look at that overhead, you must be thinking, no, this is the really big deal. Look at that. Buildings near, nearly zero energy by 2020 or 2018. But in fact, me, I, I, I wrote that wrong and uh, the colleague got it right. It's nearly zero energy new buildings. But even that, uh, even that is a, uh, I think, major progress. Uh, and as you said, sir, uh, it's already going to be a whole pile of work uh, just getting uh, that far. Um, we lobbied a lot for near, nearly zero energy rather than zero energy. Bigger bang for the buck, we managed to convince a certain number of people. You can get a lot more built, say we, at nearly zero energy than if you have to do it all zero energy. Yeah, the certificate. Uh, the other important uh, element of the directive. And you see what's written there has to be shown to the prospective new tenant or buyer. And you must be thinking, why did he bother to write such a thing? Obviously, you don't show it to your mother-in-law or something. Uh, and yet, and yet, and yet, experience from the original directive, which didn't have that in it, showed that in the end, unless you put that there, uh, it ends up by uh, nothing happens. And in fact, it's the notary the public notary at the moment of signing who says, uh, well, do I have all my papers together? Yeah, that EPC thing is there. Okay, we can sell the house. And so, you know, useless. So it was necessary to uh, get that in there. Uh, and um, uh, I think we, we, we really helped the uh, European Commission to get this through. Uh, the uh, energy performance indicator of the certificate all over Europe is now have, gonna have to be in all advertising. We think that's a very seriously important uh, improvement. Uh, there have to be recommendations for uh, cost optimal or cost effective improvement of the performance of the buildings, of the building. And uh, yeah, here again, European law. All member states have to have an EPC, uh, but it doesn't have to be the same. And uh, the result after several years of this is that we've, it varies from uh, good stuff to totally useless EPCs, totally useless. And no, no pan-European comparability, which is very bothersome for us. Getting to that second point, I am rather pleased uh, of art with Article 11.9, because that's us. And uh, we really did need that. Uh, it cost us. It really cost us because the Commission didn't want this. And when you get it through Parliament uh, with the Commission not wanting it, you pay for that down, going down the line. Uh, but the point is this. We, uh, the commercial building investors, global investors, want comparability. They want to be able to say, uh, OK, I've got this uh, Stockholm uh, shopping center. And it's 25%, uh, it's, uh, they want to advertise globally, 25% more energy efficient than the EU A grade. Well, you know, to, to be able to do that, you've got to have an EU A grade. And that's what this uh, is all about. So at least we were able, thanks to this, to be able to fight another day. We've given the blueprint to the Commission of how to do this. We'll see what uh, comes out of it. Uh, it's going to be a difficult ride. Uh, yeah, last but uh, last, uh, not least uh, from this directive, we have uh, all sorts of other things imposed on all Europeans, the inspections and so on and so forth, uh, the independent control systems. Uh, that business of independent experts for certification and the independent control systems may help over time to give us an average of better certificates. And yeah, 
<coughs> penalties. That's good. That's new, and it's good. Uh, if you don't actually do what you're supposed to do through the directive, you get into trouble for it now, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's important. Uh, I don't have much time, but I can't resist. I, 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 I noticed in the train when I was rereading this that I wanted to fly through this and say, this is about also green building finance above all. Financial incentives covered, but not worth mentioning. Well, that, that sounds arrogant if you don't, if you don't, if I just leave it at that. So it only takes me one minute to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, Article 10 of the directive, uh, you know, it just didn't work out. The political will wasn't there. So you get stuff like, really it starts, you know, fine stuff. In view of the importance of providing appropriate financing and other instruments to catalyze the energy performance of buildings and the transition to nearly zero energy buildings, member states shall take appropriate steps to consider the most relevant such instruments. Uh, member states shall draw up by 30 June 2011 a list of existing and if appropriate, proposed measures and instruments including these, uh, those of a financial nature. And my favorite, my favorite, the Commission shall, where appropriate, assist, up, um, assist upon request member states in setting up national or regional financial support programs. Well, that's great. EU money by supporting the exchange of best practice between the responsible national or regional authorities or bodies. So, uh, uh, no money. Um, poor, uh, poor, poor Mrs. Uh, Tico, who had uh, her original draft of that uh, uh, was uh, far more ambitious, but that is the uh, final watered-down result. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I don't have much, uh, how much time have I got left? Uh, six, seven minutes? Um, uh, fine. So much, uh, no more time for that key directive. There is the Energy Services Directive, and it's good because it provides a sort of framework by which the uh, member states are under a certain amount of control, and they've got to come up with real energy saving targets and plans controlled by the Commission. And if you really don't intend to do anything with the building stock, you'll never make the target. Uh, and uh, uh, you'll embarrass yourself in front of everybody else. So I think that the uh, Energy uh, Services Directive, which is now going to be beefed up, by the way, uh, just like the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive, has uh, been useful. The Renewables Directive kicks in uh, at the end of 2014. You can see for yourself, I have nothing to add to that. There's nothing more in the directive, but there is a requirement now for the use of uh, minimum levels of energy from uh, resor renewable resources in new buildings and uh, in major renovation existing buildings. That's the end. We can stop here for what actually really exists and is definitely planned under existing EU law. But my colleague already went farther than that. He's already aware of the energy efficiency plan. Good for him because it only uh, appeared a couple of weeks ago and uh, it's all very new stuff. Uh, what I tell you here is going to be a little more vague than what I've been doing uh, uh, previously, but that's not surprising because this is just an announcement of law which will definitely be tabled, but the content uh, is up for grabs. Uh, the split incentives uh, business. Uh, gee, we hope that works. Uh, some kind of pressure is going to be put on member states to solve the split incentives uh, problem by which uh, neither the tenant nor the landlord feels that uh, if he invests, uh, he's going to really gain uh, from this. The other one will gain uh, for free. As in many uh, member states, there is indeed no way for the landlord to do energy efficiency renovation and then uh, make the tenant uh, contributor pay to that. Uh, who knows, it could be interesting, but I, I have my doubts about whether this really works. Uh, I see that that slipped. Uh, what uh, number two, uh, on the other hand, does really w work. My colleague referred to that uh, already. Uh, uh, this is going to be a hard requirement for public authorities to refurbish 3% of their building stock uh, energy uh, efficiency refurbishment each year. And that is, 3% is double what they do every year. So that is, uh, I think, a substantial improvement. And look at that. When they rent or buy, often from our members, 
when they rent or buy from private people, they should always uh, be in the best available energy performance class. Well, that's fine, because they're going to have to pay us for it anyway. And so, uh, fine. They'll pay us for it, and it'll be uh, energy efficient. Everybody gains five minutes. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, the business about energy companies are realizing a fixed amount of energy savings at their clients. Uh, we saw that before in the early energy services thing. That's nice, but the original plans were then they get to put the energy prices up, which of course is good because if the energy prices are higher, it costs us, but nonetheless it's good for, uh, it, it causes us to consume less and so on and so forth. But we were cagey about this for situations like in Italy, where in fact they do pseudo work for the client. Nothing really happens in terms of energy savings and then they put up the price anyway. And so this kind of thing, uh, we're cagey about it. Um, district heating aspects, I don't have time to go through that, but I, it would be very good if they intervene, uh, if the European uh, Commission state aid authorities take a look at some of these district heating monopolies, which are uh, definitely not good for the environment and uh, not good for anybody who has to pay for this stuff. Uh, making buildings smart grid ready. Well, I'm not going to read to you what's there. Uh, you can read it yourselves, and I frankly do not know anything more than what you read there. Uh, it sounds really good, but I uh, really <laughs> no idea how that is going to uh, pan out. Uh, uh, fiscal instruments. Uh, again, I'm trying to show you where things really look to me like they can work and where they can't. I find it just great that they talk about how they'd like to do something about how when the owner makes energy efficiency improvements, then the value of the building goes up so he pays more taxes and that's bad. We agree, but I don't see the European Union really being able to have the muscle to uh, do something about that. Uh, 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 the rejects, uh, what they didn't actually uh, dare to do the uh, idea of uh, improving the energy performance of the buildings uh, when they are sold or rented out, even if you didn't want to do a renovation. But that, uh, it did occur to them, just like mapping and mandatory renovation of the poorest segment of the building stock, it occurred to them indeed that that was pretty, perhaps for European level law, pretty invasive and maybe not always cost optimal. So they passed on it. But you wonder, uh, where do they get such uh, interesting ideas? From Berkeley, which has done it. And I discover this in the Commission uh, Impact Assessment, where it would seem that the city of Berkeley, in their European English, they describe to you how uh, Berkeley has done this and the way they make it look at it uh, is a big success, but, and maybe it is. But of course, Berkeley is not Washington, it's not the United States, it's not even California. And this kind of thing might be just great for Maastricht, but uh, I'm not sure whether we could have envisaged that at a uh, European level. Uh, uh, the legislation on water performance of buildings, uh, yes, I don't have time left to go into the detail about that. Uh, uh, there were problems with the uh, business of multiple certificates. It's, we, we agree with all this. We believe in all this, but we don't want separate energy performance certificates, water performance certificates. Amalgamating them is also a problem because then the energy part eats up the water. And, 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 and indeed, sometimes there's a contradiction because the most energy efficiency HVAC systems are sometimes, are sometimes very water consuming. Bon, it's all en chantier. We'll, we'll, we'll see about this over the coming years. The eco label for buildings, uh, you see uh, written up there uh, our problem with it. We're working on it. There's not enough on the efficient management of buildings. They'd better get it right because the eco label, it's like the eco label on your toilet liquid. If you don't like it, you don't buy it, you don't use it. And, uh, uh, and so if building owners are not happy, happy with this, nothing will actually uh, happen. Uh, last, uh, yes, and least, because the least interesting is the funding. Uh, sure, there is uh, uh, EU structural funding. There's a lot of funding for poor regions. And sure, recently they did decide energy efficiency is important, so 4% of this can be reallocated to energy, uh, energy efficiency renovation in housing. Uh, that's great, but it's not fresh money 
It's not new money. It means that the member state which greedily takes all this structural funding and we already had plans for it concerning jobs and poor regions and all of it is, is loath, we see in practice, to actually uh, take some of that already allocated money and put it into, uh, into uh, housing. And uh, finally, I uh, knew that uh, there are a lot of academics here and I saw that under the European Economic Recovery Program, it sounds like there's been a war, uh, the, that uh, there is one billion for research. Uh, I leave that on the slide, which will doubtless be uh, perhaps uh, available to you, and uh, that's not the kind of thing that interests us. I don't know what is coming of it, but uh, there may be something in there uh, for you. Thank you very much. I think I'm on time.